Hello, what is going on? It's my name is 13, and I'm your coach of Kansas City Video Games. And today we have our prep for our uh, week seven, or no, week eight DBL match versus Frostfire and the uh, Irvine Infernape. So I'm going to be going with a team that I built for him. I just didn't feel like doing this live today, this time. It was a match that got postponed way too long, and when we had actually battled, I was still exhausted, so I just didn't really feel like doing a live recording. So you know what? I'm going to be doing post-com of this battle, so I'm not going to be saying what happened until we actually get into the battle, but I'm going to explain the team that I built for him. So, we start off here with Kitty the Electivire holding the Psyche Z. I should actually go over his team. Uh, Mega Venusaur, Jirachi, Hydreigon, Togekiss, Entei, Nidoking, Porygon 2, Mismages, Hitmon, Ling Lantern, and Hunter. So, it was a very, very difficult team to prep for because I would need a lot of different coverage options. But anyways, uh, Princess here is holding Psyche MZ uh, with like Psychic, Ice Punch, Cross Drop, and uh, Thunder Punch. I'm running Motor Drive because he's got a couple Pokemon that can get electric type moves, so if I can predict this, uh, an electric type move, I can get the speed boost and whatnot. I'm running the Psyche MZ Psychic so I could do uh, like the super effective hit against the Mega Venusaur. It would do 75 to 85%, which would be really nice. Uh, and considering he's only got the one immunity and the one resistance, it would be really, really good. So that's why I decided to run that. Ice Punch, just uh, mainly for I Dragon, I suppose, and Togekiss. Uh, even though Thunder Punch would hit Togekiss better. Uh, it could also hit Nido King, but I think Psychic would hit Nido King better. So, pretty cool stuff. Cross Chop, mainly for the Porygon 2. Because that was, I guess, I don't know. Porygon 2 is kind of a, an irritating wall, so you know if I can get rid of it with a Grush Up, that'd be nice. Hydreigon takes a lot from it too. Jachi doesn't want to take it either. And the Thunder Punch because of Stab, and it uh, hits. He has no immunity. He's one immunity being uh, Nido King and Lantern if it brings Volt Absorb, so. Uh, but otherwise, Electricity just hits decently on his entire team. We're running a max attack, max speed nature. For one special attack to boost Psychic a little more with a uh, hasty nature, so I can boost speed and not lose any attack, so. Pretty cool stuff. Next up, we have Valor here who hasn't come to a battle in a while. Holding Assault Blast with Magnum Pole because of Jirachi. Uh, Earthquake Explosion, Thunder Punch, and Stone Edge. So the reason I'm doing this is if I can get Valor in on the need on the Jirachi, this thing can't... Jirachi can't do a ton to Valor. Uh, so it works out very nicely for for me because I can keep the thing in there and I can hit it with Explosion and whatnot. Or not Explosion. Earthquake Explosion wouldn't do much to it. But yeah, get a few Earthquakes off it. It just works well against his entire team because he's only got two Pokemon that avoid it. Actually, Hydreigon Togekiss, I don't remember if it's made just his Levitate, but uh, anyway, yeah, so it just works well as an entire team. Explosion hits everything but Miss Magus, uh, and he has no resistances except for Jirachi, which is really, really cool. Uh, it just, Explosion is such a powerful move. I was originally thinking about running a normal gem, but I ended up deciding to go with Soul Blast because why not? So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. And then next up we have Thunder Punch. As I said, Electricity works. He's on his entire team. And then Stone Edge hits, uh, just, it's a good stab move. And he's, once again, I think he's only got the one resistance in Jirachi. Actually, Needle King too, because it's ground type. But Stone Edge just hits really nicely. Uh, max attack, max HP, four in special defense, Adam and Nature. So, Pretty, pretty simple set I'm running here. That is Velo for us. And Assault Vest just so I can take special hits better. Um, so, you know. Anyways, next up we have Rem the Gardevoir. Holding the Gardevoirite with uh, Hyper Voice, Psychic, Hidden Power, Fire, and Thunderbolt. Hyper Voice, once again, is just a good move. It hits behind substitutes, which could help in uh, certain situations. Um, Psychic is just a good move. It hits the Venusaur super hard. He's only got the one immunity to being Hydreigon, so that works out nicely. Hyper Voice hits that Hydreigon extremely hard. Hi Hidden Power Fire, I don't specifically know I brought this. I guess mainly for Jirachi, because it's the only thing that takes much damage from it, so I guess so. And Thunderbolt for uh, Huntail and Togekiss, uh, Lantern if it's not Volt Absorb, so uh, pretty cool stuff. We're running a max speed, max special attack set with Intimidator and 4 in HP, just cuz, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. Next up we have Toothpick the Mudsdale holding the Assault Vest with Inner Focus because of Jirachi, Earthquake, Facade, Close Combat, and Heavy Slams. Obviously, Jirachi has Serene Grace, which means it doubles the power of flinching moves. Actually, Togekiss has it too. So, having Inner Focus would keep uh, Mudsdale here from flinching, so I, I, I could sit in here on whatever it wants to do, and um, I don't know what happened for the reason that the nature's got covered up down at the bottom, but you can see that. It's just really weird. I apologize for that. I Because I... I don't know. It doesn't even matter at this point. It might have changed per Pokemon. Yeah, it did. For some reason. Oh, yeah, that's why. 
because of this thing here, the smog on analysis thing. Whatever. Uh, yeah, so inner focus because of Jirachi, and I can not have to worry about getting flinched because Toothpick does wonders to against Jirachi. But uh, Mudsdale here is holding the Assault Vest so I can take special hits better from Lantern and Huntail and Venusaur if it decides to run special. Hydreigon too, Needle King, so he's got a lot of powerful special attackers on his team. Earthquake, I'm pretty sure Ms. Mini just gets Earthquake, so Earthquake is, doesn't affect that, as well as Hydreigon and Tokus. Facade is just in case he wants to uh, use a burn. If he wants to burn me with his mages or something like that, or Sacred Fire Entei, I can have a move that does pretty deep, pretty good damage still. Uh, close Combat just hits the Hydreigon, I suppose. Uh, Porygon 2 does a ton of damage to that, so pretty cool stuff. And then Heavy Slam just because it's a, a good move because I out I outweigh a lot of his Pokemon. I think it, everything except for Entei I outweigh by a lot, so I'd use Earthquake against Entei anyway, but... Anyways, yeah, so we're rocking max physical attack, max HP, the foreign special defense, adamant nature, so same exact set as Velar, except for the moves are different. And then next up we have Casper the Umbreon, also running inner focus because of Jirachi with lefties, foul play, heal bell, wish protect, so I didn't want to have to bring a typical one, but uh, this Umbreon works a lot better for my team, uh, for this team, it, it just it helps me out better, <laughs> I don't know, it just works fairly decently. Once again, foul play. He only has actually one resistance being Hydreigon's and Tokus, excuse me, so uh, Foul Play works really nicely against his entire team, especially against those good physical attackers. Forgot about him only. Uh, Heal Bell just is good to get rid of burns, like if Toothpick gets burned, even though Facade does a lot of damage, uh, it can't touch the, the, the Miss Mages, so it'd be good to get the Heal Bell off. Uh, Wish, so I can get some health back and swap into some Pokemon and protect, so I can get uh, Wish... Res uh, wish health back here on Casper. We're rocking a max HP set with 192 in defense, 56 in special defense, and then uh, an adamant nature and 8 in attack, so foul play does a little bit more damage. But this is so I can live physical hits better, uh, mainly because that hit only is the biggest threat to Casper here, because I don't have to worry so much about Jirachi, uh, and I'm running a more physical set because of Jirachi, so uh, pretty cool stuff. And finally, we have Bo Butt the Empoleon with the Rocky Helmet, Defog, Drill Pack, Stealth Rocks, and Skull. So Defog, obviously, to get rid of Rocks. He does have a couple rockers, um, being the Nido King, and I don't remember if him only gets rocks. I don't, I'm not sure if it does, but uh, Nido King definitely does. So I'm running Drill Pack mainly for the Mega Venusaur, uh, just so I can, if I, if it, he swaps in or something like that, I can predict the swapping, get enough, get off a nice Drill Pack. Stealth Rocks does well against his entire team because he's got uh, several Pokemon that take 25% from it, so it works out nicely for me in that situation. And Skull because it's just, just a good move and. He only would have the one immunity in the lantern, so pretty cool stuff. Um, we're, we're rocking a very strange set. We're rocking 224 HP, uh, 192 special defense, 8 in special attack, 76 in defense, and 8 in attack, so that I can uh, do a little bit more damage to both Drill Peck and Skull, but I can also take either hits on either side of the uh, either side of the line, so it works out nicely. We're rocking a serious nature, so I don't lower my speed. Um, I don't know what I outspeed, but you know. Um, I'm pretty sure I outspeed Huntail, maybe, I don't know, doesn't matter, but that's why I'm running on Bulb Butt. So that's the team we're bringing, and I'll see you in the battle. Alright, here we are for the battles. You see, this is the team he brought. He brought Huntail, Jirachi, Porygon 2, Venusaur, Needle King, and Hitmonlee. So, uh, right away, that it scares me immensely because he brought the Huntail. Now, the, the issue would be I need to take the thing down very quickly, which my best bet would be Princess, but at the same time, he does have the Electric Community in the Needle King, so if I don't get the Switch, Switch Rite or something like that, it could be very bad. So, we're going to play with the music on uh, because I'm going to keep the the, <laughs> the music in I'm gonna I have the, the battle be a normal speed so I can talk as I'm going but anyways he leads out with the uh, the Venusaur and I really wanted to predict it to stay in and go for the uh, Z psychic but I just went for psychic just in case he didn't stay in and it was to get the cross job off here and do a ton of damage to ru the, the rubber ducky which is very nice uh, that thing obviously has a pretty decent amount of special attack investment because it did a lot to princess there and I hit the Jirachi with the cross job which is 31% which is very nice but here I know that I don't want to stay in against Jirachi I don't I know it didn't get much against me but I didn't really want to stay in there he gets a crit zen head about which does suck uh, he does if he didn't get the crit I would have been able to take Jirachi out with Velar. So Velar is going to go down here because uh, I don't really want to swap in against anything. So uh, it, 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 it does very much suck. <laughs> 
Next up, they send in Toothpick, and I just go over the safe Earthquake because nothing avoids it. So Earthquake's going to do a decent amount of damage to this thing, nearly take it out. And right here, I decided to go for Close Combat uh, because I felt like Close Combat would take it out from this point. No, I go for Close Combat the next turn. I don't know why I did. Why I didn't do it that turn. I would have taken him out if I had done it that turn because I did 59% with that close combat but he's gonna go for the tri attack here and just sack up the porygon and let this thing die and i go for earthquake so i don't lose any more defense stats which works out here nicely for me uh he next sends in huntail and this is where things go bad so he's gonna set up the substitute and i'm gonna go for earthquake so i'm gonna be able to get rid of his subs but the issue is i don't want to stay in here and he gets up the shell smash and i was really hoping he wasn't carrying like a uh, white herb but he was an earthquake nearly takes him out no, down to 62 percent and as you can guess I couldn't do anything from here because I screwed up and I let this thing sit up. Told you that it was very scary having him bring the Huntail, but he baton passes in a Nido King. And I went for Drill Peg because I actually expected the, the Venusaur to come out there. And he's just going to go for Earth Power and take out Bubble Butt. So Nido King ends up sweeping the rest of my squad. So uh, Nido King's actually another Pokemon I wish I had on the team. Um, I want to hopefully want to draft it ne next season. I had to drop it season two because I didn't want to drop anything else, but. Uh, he's just gonna literally take out the rest of my squad with the Nido King, and it really sucked. I shouldn't have let the thing set up, but it's not like not much I could do. It's just it sucks really. So, uh, <laughs> it's just unfortunate because I really needed to to beat him, and I I just didn't. It was not a good match on my part, and I didn't. <laughs> it just didn't do well. So it's it's one of those things. I'm just I, it's something about league play. It just and it, it wasn't a good time for me to battle. Like, I just didn't... It was not <laughs> a good time to do anything for me. So, it was just... I just didn't even care. So, you know. It wasn't a good mindset to have. And it was... It, it sucks. Because I wanted to do better. And I felt like I built a good squad for his team. I just... I did... I, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't expect the Huntail. Because I had several counters for the Huntail. I didn't expect him to bring it. So, I didn't prep accordingly for it. And I wasn't able to get my heavy hitter in on it. I should have done that immediately um, when he sent in the Huntail. I mean, it wouldn't have mattered, actually. Because I couldn't have outsped the thing. That's the issue. Is that none of my Pokemon could outspeed it because I wasn't running a Scarf for this week. And even still, I'm not even sure I could have outsped it with a Scarf. Because Huntail, even with base 50 speed, after it gets the, like, the double boost, it's, it's hard to, like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's hard to get past it. So anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the battle video. Like, especially in the description below, you'll find a link to the Debo Twitter, as well as a Crossfire channel. Be as well. So thanks so much for watching, I'll talk to you all later.